announcement. And uh, can you get a shot of uh, a couple of these pictures? You wonder, in addition to his music, of course, why he sold so many records. Look at what those. Look at the eyes those young girls were thinking about back in those days. Oh, red lips, huh? Hey, sure. You were a card-carrying cutie, that's for sure. And now here you are, all grown up, and music sounds terrific. And Garden Party has become almost an anthem for you, and for many others, uh, I suppose. Have, have other uh, rock and roll artists responded to the sentiment of that song? Uh, yeah, I think it, uh, hopefully, it, it meant something to, to uh, you know, quite a few people, I hope. It, it, it was uh, actually the first song that I, uh, I wrote that was a really a very personal thing that happened to me and uh, it was just a real nice feeling to know that and uh, you know a lot of people would would really pick up on what the song was about you know yeah I bet you were expressing a, 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 a frustration of many artists who had been regarded primarily in recent years for the work they had done 15 20 years ago and wanted to get out of the nostalgia slot pretty much yeah I was and I, what it was was I, I had played a, a show at Madison Square Garden and it was a rock and roll revival and uh, I, at that time, I just formed a, a, a new band, and we've been doing a lot of concerts and things. And I've been doing a lot of writing and, and things. And uh, I, I kind of got taught. I talked myself into doing the show, really. And, and we went on and played the show. And, and I didn't realize at that time it was. Uh, I think it was a little different than it is now. I think there's more credibility given to a lot of the artists back then, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, at, at this point. But uh, but that that it was kind of camp to laugh at the you know the people on on there and stuff and, and you had to have that certain look and and I didn't think my hair was long at all at that time I remember uh, you know seeing pictures of myself and my hair was real long at that time you know and so was everybody else's you know yeah. so we didn't really look like we belonged there and I didn't feel like I belonged there but I didn't it wasn't a, a negative experience for me really it was a kind of a learning process not mm -hmm. to go against my First, uh, to be true to yourself. Feeling, you know, yeah. Yeah. And now you've invited upon yourself uh, another garden party in November. You're performing uh, at true. Madison Square Garden. That's true. And uh, Chuck Berry's going to be there. And Gary U.S. Bond. And uh, like I said, I've, I've done a couple of other shows that, that have gone over really well. And I think uh, I've really enjoyed them. And, and they're just, just, just rock and roll. You know, it's not, uh, it's not really uh, dated at all. Now, how did your uh, folks feel about, I mean, we're talking Ozzy and Harriet now, how did they feel about you going into rock and roll in the first place? That was a pretty radical well, form of music. Though. Yeah, it was at that time, and it was uh, it was really the beginnings of rock and roll, and uh, they, they were always very much for me doing it and performing and stuff, because my, my dad started off with, he had an orchestra, and he used to travel around and, and, uh, and play all over, and, and my mom started with, uh, with my dad's band as a vocalist, you know, so they know all about one-nighters and, you know, and they knew all about, you know, all the bus trips you take and, and all that, so, and they were they were very much behind it. But it started out, many people perceived rock and roll to be the devil's music, and uh, a lot of those people would be watching a family television show, such as uh, the Nelson family. Yeah, that's true, and, and we did get a lot of letters about, uh, you know, how can you let your son do, sing this evil music and... and everything but my uh, my folks always had a you know an idea that uh, you know they, they always enjoyed music and I always enjoyed music and it's something I think uh, is done well at all and I think it'll it will last because I remember you know everybody was saying well the rock and roll is going to be out in two or three three weeks or something you know and mm -hmm. it's hung in there I give it a couple more weeks a couple more weeks <laughs> Did you spend uh, any time with uh, the likes of Elvis and uh, and the Beatles? I mean, have you had that kind of fraternity in the music community? There really, yeah, there was, and, and it probably even more so uh, for me back in the early times because, uh, you know, I started um, 56 and 57 when it was really starting. That's when I first met Elvis, and, uh, and we did. We became very good friends, and, and, and I used to hang out with Eddie Cochran and Gene Vincent and people like that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we'd all get together, and, somebody's house or something and, and you know write songs and, and it was really a, a very interesting time did you do things together other than musical did you was it sports or oh yeah uh, uh sure well I, I, I had a motorcycle at that time and, 
then the Jimmy Vincent and motorcycle. We used to cruise the boulevard, and, you know. Yes, well, that tough. some of them uh, became infamous for being bad drivers, too. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And yeah, they lived uh, some reckless ways. They were really uh, very good people, really. Mm -hmm. Uh, sports? Uh, did you ever have time? Did you have time? Yeah, I, I did. Yeah, I wanted to have a football. He did. He, he had a football team, and uh, we played. Uh, we had this big challenge match, and I used to play it on the weekends, just uh, just to run around, you know. I mean, not not really get serious about it. Not the best you know, approach. Not at all. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I mean, you can make your run a lot faster out there. <laughs> but uh, I. Uh, so we had a we had a touch football game all set up and I remember driving over there with a couple of friends of mine you know and they they, they played for UCLA at that time and and uh, walked, went to this field where he said to, to meet him and uh, they had a whole team there with jerseys and everything you know and, and it's like the Rose Bowl or something you know yeah and was that a secret or do people show up now to watch uh, Rick Nelson play football against Elvis oh, Presley no. or do you try to keep uh, them? it was just really kind of uh, friends you know and everything and we had a it was it was a lot of fun. It really was. Was he a good athlete? He was. Yeah, he, he was. He was. He, he really loved it. You know. Well, it's uh, terrific to see you doing the music as well as ever, Rick. And you'll do more before you get away from here tonight. Thank you. Sitting with Rick Nelson and uh, Rick, who is also now a proud parent of an entire show business family, as. Uh, well, uh, Dorothy and Harriet were before you. Yeah, they're all very involved in uh, either music or acting. My, my daughter's a very good actress, Tracy. And yes, she has uh, one of the leads in Square Pegs. She uh, did, yeah. She's very, very good. And that was a real surprise to me, you know. She, she just went out and really did that all on her own. And, and I have boys uh, who are 16 and a uh, boy that's 8. And uh, they're all very much involved in music. And, Real good player. So try as you may, you won't be able to discourage them from going into show business. No, I don't think I would anyway. No, no it's, I, I guess it's nice that it's a tribute to a parent if their child wants to grow up and to do what you did, which is tell 50 million records. Well, it's not the life. <laughs> I know that you'll do before you enter into this duo relationship. The uh, song's called Stood Up. Yeah. So uh, you'll please uh, stand up. Uh, stand up. Do it. Uh, Rick Nelson. Thank you, Ricky. We'll negotiate later, you see. This one will not be 